Welcome to part 4 of my project turning my old PC into a NAS server. In this video I'm going to install Plex Media Server software on the NAS so that I can stream my movie and TV show collection to all my devices, my smart TVs, Raspberry Pis, laptops, tablets, iPhones and so on. The first thing we've got to do is point our browser to Plex.tv which should be the first result in Google if you search for Plex. They offer this free software for virtually every platform, Windows, Mac, Linux, off-the-shelf NAS servers, and so on. And the first thing we should do is create an account here. So click on sign up in the top right and create a free account. Once you've done that, you can sign in. Here are all the different platforms they offer the software for. But if you've been following along, you'll know my NAS is running Windows 10 Pro. So we'll head over to the Windows section. Now at the bottom of this page, there's a link to get the software, but to save time in future, just go to the download section that's right there in the top navigation menu. Choose Windows in the drop-down, then click Download. Once it's downloaded, launch the installer and follow the prompts. You access the Plex server management interface by browsing to the IP address of your server on port 32400. If you have any firewall software running on the NAS, you'll have to open that port. In this case, I'm sitting on the NAS server, so I can go to 127.0.0.1, which is the local host, on port 32400. Agree to the terms of service and log in using the account that you created earlier. The first thing it'll do is ask you to give your Plex server a name. I'm just going to use Penates, which is the host name of the NAS. Notice that the box for outside access is checked. This is optional, but it's a really cool feature I use to access my movies while I'm away from home and to share with my friends. But this does need some extra configuration, which I'll run through later in the video. Now it prompts you to add libraries. Libraries are how Plex organizes all your media and you should create a separate library for each different type of media. So let's start off by adding a movies library. You can give the library a custom name, but movies works for me. And then we have to tell it where the media, the actual movie files for this library are going to be stored. In part three of this NAS build, I created a folder for my movies and a separate folder for my TV shows. So I point this to the movies folder that I created. Now this folder could be empty, but I've already copied all my movie files in there. Plex likes to create a couple of standard libraries like photos and music and so on, but I don't use those, so I'm just going to remove them. Now I'll add my TV shows library in the same way I did the movies one. I personally uncheck the box to share data with Plex, that's just how I roll. Um, and then Plex will sit there and scan those folders and catalogue all the movies and so on. If we click on the status tab up here, we can see what it's doing. Now, obviously this is going to take a while, I've got a pretty substantial collection, but it only needs to do it once. How does Plex match up the movie and TV show info? Well, before you copy your media into those movie and TV show folders, you need to make sure it's named correctly in a format and structure that Plex expects. So let's look at a TV show as an example of how to do it. On the left is the TV show as displayed in Plex. On the right are the actual video files. As you can see, I created a folder in my TV shows directory with the name of the TV show. Inside that, I created a folder for each season. In this case, we're looking at season one. Then each episode file is named carefully. Plex is quite smart in that it can make some good educated guesses about your files, but I use this format, which works almost 100%. I start off with the show name, a hyphen, then the season and episode number, written as S, then the season number, then E and the episode number, for example, S01, E01, for season one, episode one, followed by a hyphen, and any episode name that you might like, but this is less critical. And in Plex, you can see it's identified everything correctly. If I click on season one, there are all the episodes with the right names and descriptions. If anything is incorrect, you can click on the eye icon and edit the info. Just click the padlock next to unlock it first. You can change the thumbnail image that's used, the tags, and so on. Now let's look at movies. You can throw all the movie files into the root folder of your movies folder, or you can put each movie in its own separate subfolder, which is what I prefer. Make sure the folder name matches up with the movie file name, 
And you should include the year of the movie in that name as well, as often there's been more than one movie made with the same name over the years, and this helps ensure Plex matches the right info to your movie file. Putting a movie in its own folder is actually quite handy because you can keep it together with any extra subtitle files or anything else you might want. Now, some movies include the subtitles in the movie file itself, but if they don't, or if you want to download subtitles in another language, you can add .srt files for each one. I download these from opensubtitles.org. You should give the subtitles file the same file name as your movie file, including the year, but you also need to tell Plex the language by adding a two-letter language code into the name, in this example EN, which is English. So the format would be the movie name, the year in parentheses, a period, the two-letter language code, then another period, followed by SRT. Now, Plex will normally only scan your folders for new movies or subtitled files when you tell it to by clicking the refresh button, but you can set it to watch those folders for changes and rescan automatically. That's what I do. Just head over to the server tab, then library in the left-hand menu and check the box. Alternatively, you can check the box to have Plex scan your, me your media regularly, like every hour or every day if you prefer. And finally, I want to talk about remote access. This lets you stream movies from your Plex server while you're away from home, as long as you have an internet connection, of course. This is under the remote access section in the left-hand menu. Mine is already configured correctly, so the status dot and text is green. If there was an issue, it would be red. Yours will likely be red initially, as you need to configure your router to allow access to the Plex server. For this, we use a feature on the router called port forwarding. Log into your router's management page. I'm using a Netgear Nighthawk router, so your interface may look different than mine, depending what router you have, but all routers basically work on the same principle, so you're just looking for an option called port forwarding. This lets you tell the router that when it receives a request from the outside world on a specific port number, in the case of Plex, it's 32400, it should forward that request to a specific machine on your home network. You can see mine is already configured right here. Requests on port 32400 are being forwarded to port 32400 on 192.168.1.200, which is Panatees, my NAS. That's why I configured Panatees with a static IP address in my previous video. Some routers let you specify a port number and an IP address to forward to. Others, like this Netgear, want you to define the port number in question as a service and then assign that service to a specific machine. So here I would click Add Service, give it a name, enter in port 32400 for the external port and tell it to forward to the same port on the NAS, then choose penalties from the list below, then click add and then be done. If you think about it, if the NAS didn't have a static IP address, next time we reboot it or the router, it may be given a different IP address to this one so the port forwarding would stop working. In the next part of this series on building a NAS, I'll show you how to deal with backing up your computers to the NAS regularly.